Hey, it's Dor. Got Coach with me. A little bit windy out here, but uh, nonetheless, today's video is going to be all about CCW. Where we carry, how we draw. Uh, we both like to switch it up a little bit depending on platform and situation. So we're going to get into that next. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back. And like I said, it's all about CCW. We've both been carrying for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's definitely different ways to do it. You know, it ultimately comes down to the individual, you know, what you're most comfortable with, because what you're most comfortable with is what you're gonna carry. And you need to be carrying in order for any of this to work. So, you know, I have, you know, what works for me, coach has got what works for him. I mean, let's get into it. Right on. Okay, so you're carrying every day. And if you're carrying every day, you're gonna need insurance. Okay, we use CCW Safe because uh, they're a really good American company that will send you an expert after your incident. Okay, they've done it before, you haven't. CCW Safe will send you somebody, an expert, out to take care of you, to walk you through the process. No other company will do that for you. So that's the one we use. Check them out in the link below. Might be the best decision you make. Anyway. Yeah. Back to concealed carrying, okay? My concept behind my CCW is I normally carry everything, it's gonna be on this side. So I carry it 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock maybe. Now, that gives me an advantage in that I'm always going to the same place. Whether I'm over it and it's on my gear, if it's up on my plate carrier uh, or, or on my belt, it's all pretty much in the same spot. My hand's already going there. Now. The three o'clock, 3.30 position for me works best because, I mean, if you're going appendix, it's fast, but it has to be because nothing else looks like this, okay? It looks like I'm going for a gun. But in that situation, if I blade off like this and use this hand, like, hey, hey, I don't want anything. I don't want anything like that. I can have my hand on my gun so I can blade off and cover the gun, you know, for the draw. Now, the other way I carry is in this front pocket, and that's because it's very convenient. So I can just reach in. It's not gonna be a fast draw, but I can put my hand on that gun and it doesn't look like much, but I've got a hand on a gun and I can draw and, and get it out. So that's the, the concept behind my yeah. concealed carry. How about you? Similar to coaches, um, I, I do run on the belt. I do run a, got a traditional clip-in holster, different make, different model holsters for different make, different model pistols. I just run in the uh, Gen 5 Glock 19 pretty unit about the most universal and widely used platform in America as far as I know. Right now I'm running it at the what was known as about the one o'clock appendix. I do run one o'clock appendix from time to time but it's not my go-to, it's not my standard. My standard is back here at about four o'clock. So three o'clock's right down the seam of the pants. That's where a duty overt working gun would go. So I cheat it back a little bit past this next belt loop, make sure my clip is good to go in my leather belt and that's generally how I run it. For the same reason, I, in, a, in a fight, in a scuffle, I wanna be able to break away and make space. I wanna blade off and I wanna create space. We have some other videos in regards to that on the channel, but that is my go-to. But it's harder to conceal, especially a mid-sized pistol, printing, kneeling down. So I do find myself from time to time switching it back up here to the appendix. I have that versatility using this type of holster. So I could go right here. This is a lot easier. I'm bending down, I'm doing stuff, whatever. And I do drill and I do train for both the four and the one o'clock pull, the appendix pull. And then sometimes, for whatever reason, I will run this thing all the way to the rear, to the six o'clock position. I don't know, maybe I watched a lot of movies, too many movies growing up. You know, it's how rigs rolled. Um, but what this gives me back here at six o'clock is this is now an ambi pull. I can get to this weapon system with both hands. In fact, it's easier with my op support hand to go from six o'clock at a right-handed holster. So if for whatever reason, this hand, this side of my body is impeded, or for any old reason out in real life, you know, it's hard to imagine what's gonna Broken, happen. But, occupied. Yeah, but for whatever reason, I need to be able to get to a gun left-handed, I can switch back to six o'clock. And it's just, it's, it's actually a pretty decent, easy pull. 
And that's where I generally go from. I also like, you know, if in the event that my right hand was trapped, I was in a scuffle, I'm gonna run something along the lines of this to start that let go of my hand conversation. Yeah, and you guys have all seen this one before. This yeah. is the same thing. Exactly. The whole idea behind this is that get that small knife that's gonna create that space for you. You know, cause you need to be able to, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's coming your way. Being a good guy, carrying a CCW, it's all about being on defense until that first shot or whatever it is cracks off and you're generally gonna be at a disadvantage. So training is paramount. And then, you know, for me, I like to be able to switch it back and forth between those three positions. And God forbid, my right hand became incapacitated or trapped or for whatever reason, I have multiple means to free this thing up. So now there's other ways, there's other places. Yeah. There's ankle, there's cross draw. The shoulder uh, holster. Yeah, there's a lot of different you know methods out there. Whatever you choose, whatever makes sense to you, mm -hmm. just make sure you train it. If you train it and that's where you're gonna go, then you'll know under that stress that you're, you're gonna be able to, to make that draw. Okay, so I, this is just what we use. You have to make the choice for whatever makes sense for you, your situation, your uniform, or your, uh, you know, you've got to wear a suit that may not work. If you're a lifeguard, whatever. I mean, you know, fanny pack. There's a bunch of different ways to, to skin this cat, right? We're just showing you what works for us. Yeah, definitely, first and foremost, you need to be able to get to it. You need to be able to get that weapon system into the fight. You also need to be able to reload it, but just past that, when I consider, you know, also incredibly important is it needs to be comfortable. Yep. You know, you need to be comfortable carrying this equipment because if you're not comfortable, you're gonna find reasons not to. And the most important aspect of EDC is to actually be EDCing. Every day, man. you know? Every day. So, you know, there's a wide range and variety of options. I highly suggest you look into all of them, at least give them a try. But uh, again, this is just what works for us. All right, guys, we've got a target set up here. So we're gonna go ahead and run through some courses of fire just to demonstrate um, how, we, how we do things. All right, guys, so we're set up here at the target. I'm gonna go ahead and start from the four o'clock. This, uh, this is what I'm most comfortable with. This is my go-to position for uh, concealed carry on the belt. I think it, uh, it gives me a better chance to be successful going into the unknown. Because anytime you're gonna have to use any of this in a real life application, it's pretty much gonna be an unknown situation. If it isn't, you're gonna have a pretty interesting story to tell. So without further ado, I'm lined up on my target. I'm gonna go ahead and stay stationary just for demonstration purposes. And all I have on is a t-shirt right now because this is how we do February <laughs> out here. And uh, so lined up on the target, I've decided I need to take the shots. I'm gonna go ahead, if I have the luxury of using my support hand because I'm not in a fight, in a tussle, I'm gonna go ahead and do so because it's faster and there's less chance of me having a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and defeat my garment. I'm gonna get that touch point, sink my grip, and I'm immediately gonna come out of the holster, marry up my shots, just like so, with two. When I train, I generally do two shot bursts, but I'm gonna marry up my hands and get those shots. Come right back off, all right, thread is eliminated, back to the holster. Okay, if for whatever reason, I decided to switch it up and go to the appendix, you know, one o'clock, that's okay. The appendix, I think, is easier to conceal, especially with a larger, not too large, but mid-sized Glock 19. I am gonna be able to get away more with this, especially wearing solid colors. If you wear plaids and shirts that have a lot of different colors, I think it's a, it's a lot easier to hide. They don't print as obviously, just an added tip, but I don't care enough about that to make, make that part of my uh, selection in the morning. All right, guys, so from the one o'clock position, my draw, very similar to before. I'm gonna go ahead and stay stationary. I'm just gonna defeat the garment, get the gun out, take shots. Fast shooting, uh, self-defense shooting is fast shooting, so I get it out there with muscle memory, and I just get those two shots off, bring it back to the high ready. Okay, I'm good to go and I'll go ahead and stow. All right, now, for, for whatever reason, I'm running it at six o'clock. I could go ahead, reach back with my strong right hand that I normally shoot with, punch out, take shots, or for whatever reason, if I need to, I can do so with my left hand. For whatever reason, I need to draw with my left hand, go ahead, punch this thing out, just like so. I don't generally shoot left-handed. I do drill that way from time to time. 
Um, if you are going to offhand draw a live weapon and take shots, please do not wait till an actual emergency arises before that happens. Go ahead, get some dry fire reps in, and then work your way to live fire. Okay, so for my two types of concealed carry, we'll start with the pocket. Now the pocket, it's not gonna be fast. There's no, there's no way to get in here quick, but you can casually put your hand in your pocket and be standing by. So when something happens, you're out. It's a fairly quick draw once you got your hand on there, okay? So again, and you know, putting the sucker away, it's easy enough just to take this out, put it back in, drop it back in, okay? So now we're, we're here. So, okay, if I'm here, like, hey, dude, no problem. It's an easy day. And this is a little 22 Magnum. I don't want to get shot with a 22 Magnum. You remember, the idea here is you're a sheepdog. You just want to stop the fight. You're not worried about putting the guy down. You're going to put holes in him and shoot at him and make him go away. So that's, that's the theory behind this. And this thing is, it weighs 11 ounces. You got concealed carry holster, drops right in, and you'll forget it's there until you need it. Now, the other way I carry, now for a while when I was doing a lot of driving overseas, I carried cross draw because it was, it was better for when I'm driving here in the, in the car, I could just reach over here and be able to take care of any threat on this side, you know, because I was a driver. Well, when I stopped doing that and went back to my regular job, my transition was kind of strange because I didn't know where things were. So now that, that drove me to keeping everything on this side, okay? Uh, you can go to six o'clock if you want to go deep cover, but for most everything I do, it's going to be right here. So here at 3.30ish, again, 3.30, 4 o'clock, you can push it more forward, but then that's less concealed. It tends to be, it tends to print more out here on the hip. But right in here, I got this little, little pocket right here that kind of just sucks everything in. And that's, you know, that's a, uh, SIG 320X carry in there, and it kind of drops in. It's not too bad, even under just a t-shirt. In a fair hurry, you're gonna clear the garment. Okay, decent speed. It's not as fast as, as here because there's shorter distance, right? You got a little something more. Kind of carefully reholster that bad boy. Now, but what this can give you tactically if you've got an issue, like, hey, dude, I don't want anything to do with it, and then you move this hand, get him distracted, get him talking, and while you're doing that, you're getting your hand on your gun. So when he presents that deadly threat that you need to deal with, it's right there. You're on him. There's no faster draw than when your hand's actually on the gun. Okay, so that's the reason that I carry where I carry. Plus, whatever I'm carrying, whether it's overt, out here on, on duty or up on a plate carrier, it's always in this area. So my hand is on its way to that position, uh, you know, no matter what uh, situation I'm in. Now in a colder climate or wherever it makes sense, you've got a jacket on or just any cover garment at all. Now you're gonna have the gun exposed underneath here. The technique is the same, just slightly different, but instead of reaching up and pulling this out, I, this hand can stay up here and deal with whatever you got to deal with. And this hand's just going to sweep back. You're going to get that good grip on the gun and then come back here and take your shots. Okay. So again, that clips in there. Just make sure your, your garment, you know, it's very important. Make sure that garment stays out of the way. And then you're covered on um, easy day. So this is like, we call it dressing for the gun or if it makes sense. On a hot day wearing this jacket, uh, you're going to look kind of strange. On a hotter day, you might want to wear something a little bit lighter. How's it going? So, like Coach was saying, you know, this is just kind of a big shirt I used to wear at my last job. You could keep stuff underneath it, concealable play care, et cetera. But for all intents and purposes, it's a jacket. If you have more layers on, you know, being able to keep, create space and have both hands free starts to become more and more of, of a, an issue, more and more of a need. So assuming I can have both hands, you know, I'm going to go ahead, clear my garment this way, start working on the uh, the t-shirt, and I'm going to train myself to be able to always be able to do it one-handed. 
for the event where I do have this hand is being, it's, it's being held on to, it's striking, it's blocking, whatever. But I'm gonna go ahead and train myself to get to the pistol, at which time as I draw, I'm gonna go ahead and suck this hand back. I'm not gonna be flailing around or anything because I don't wanna shoot myself in the hand. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing out, get it up, and send two shots as fast as need be and keeping it on target. But as far as defeating the garment and then putting it back away, I'm gonna make sure I clear my fabric, get it in there. And again, I'm gonna train myself to go one-handed, but if I can use this hand, I'm going to, because it's faster. It's all about speed. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead, defeat garment, get those two shots out, center mass, figure out what's going on, back to high ready, put it away. Now, if I need to do a reload, I do my reloads from my front pocket. I use the Neo Mag. And if the gun runs dry, obviously I'll do a combat reload, but if I'm doing attack reload, I'll go ahead and just bring it up, do a quick bump, stick this thing back in my pocket, hopefully get it back on the magnet, maybe not, that's okay. But I'm gonna keep my situational awareness on the situation that I'm in. All right, so when it comes to your reload, you wanna make sure that you practice this, that you're gonna use this the same way. Dor and I both use the Neo Mag. Uh, Dor likes to put his in his front pocket, but normally that one's taken up by other clip-on stuff. And I don't wanna be accidentally shoving this into my mag well, thinking that it's a magazine. So on the, once you've taken your shots, and I got slide lock, so I'll mag out, and then I'm gonna reach back here. If this hand comes and sweeps up, gets that good grip on the gun, turns it back, take my shots, okay? And it's, it's a real simple mag change, but you just reach them from that, they're pushing through the pocket and it just drops right into your hand in that perfect index position for your reload. All right guys, so that was a quick down and dirty of just how we run our CCWs. Different strokes for different folks, um, different methodologies for different situations and applications. But the important thing is, is you know, you figure out what works for you and you train to it. You train, you train, you train. There's a lot of this type of training you can do without firing live shots, you know? Draw the blinds and get that dry fire, get that work in and out of the holster. Make sure you're comfortable doing so, not only with the actual draw, but the carry, you know, you gotta be comfortable. It all comes back to what you have on you is what's gonna see you through that difficult situation. And then, you know, obviously we have a little bit different way of doing it. And that's cool too. Door's tall and thin. He can get away with that appendix carry. I got a little more midsection there. So I tend to print more with that. So that pushes it over here for me. Um, but remember guys, if you're, if you're carrying, you're gonna be reacting, all right? The threat has to happen first and then you react to it. So that's not the time to be inventing new stuff, okay? You're gonna dry fire, like Dor said, decide what works for you and then drill it. Drill it, drill it, drill it. Drill it in different clothes, different seasons. If you live in a place that gets really hot in the summertime, you're gonna be dressed different than when it's really cold in the wintertime. So make sure that you, your, your concept works for you and, and work that methodology, all right? And if you like this content, like, subscribe, and leave us some comments. This is Doran Coach, out.